claim the mantle of science for their acceptance of that, which is already well known, while demonstrating a lack of understanding of the principles on which prior discoveries were made by rejecting possibilities that do not fit with their current with their personal assumptions. We're all beneficiaries of theories and principles that have overcome great resistance before eventual acceptance. Great scientists and inventors have always possessed the ability to separate the real facts from the unproven assumptions of popular consensus and have pursued their own visions without regard to the deprecations of short-sighted critics. While much can be learned from consensus, those who rely on it exclusively perish when the floods descend. Rather than placing our faith in the ever-changing popular and academic consensus, the shifting sands of tiny minds, Christ invites us to build upon his rock. He declares, I am the Lord thy God, I am more intelligent than they all. <clears throat> Some evangelical groups have latched onto the claims of dissident and ex-Mormon scholars that DNA evidence disproves Book of Mormon historicity in their efforts to discredit the LDS faith. DNA and dating arguments do not present an exclusive challenge to LDS teachings, although critics would like to present them as such. Rather, such arguments produce issues for the biblical Judeo-Christian worldview in general. Strict biblical chronology suggests that man has been on the earth for only 6,000 years and that a universal flood occurred approximately 2350 BC. If all mankind are descended from Eve, why do not all humans share the same mitochondrial DNA? Where is the archaeological evidence of a great worldwide flood? God promised David Abraham, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. Yet no Abrahamic Y chromosome has been identified among modern Jewish populations who consider themselves to be children of Abraham. While addressing such topics is beyond the scope of this presentation, attempts of critics to characterize LDS teachings as unscientific and irrational, while failing to apply similar standards of objective validation to their own beliefs amounts to a suicide bombing. There is something distinctly bizarre about evangelical groups like Living Hope Ministries enlisting agnostic evolutionist scholars as their experts to challenge the LDS church over Book of Mormon DNA issues. If one could continue the interviews by asking these same scholars about many events described in the Bible, one wonders if their admirers would continue to accept their pronouncements with such credulity. Every faith accepts some beliefs that lie outside of the ever-changing popular and academic consensus. If one were to use popular consensus as the basis for religious belief, what would be left? Studies show that today, most Americans do not believe in the resurrection. Claims that LDS teachings are scientifically untenable, while those of other faiths are well documented, are intrinsically dishonest. My interest in Book of Mormon DNA issues began several years ago when my bishop in Texas asked me to help a less active young man who was struggling with this topic. I carefully and open-mindedly studied the data and wrote a detailed article to highlight for him the fallacy of critics' claims. We established several appointments to meet, but he never appeared. When I finally reached him by phone, he promised to come by and pick up the article when he was interested. I never heard from him again. I've often found that addressing an individual's alleged concerns on one topic only brings forth a litany of others. Many don't want to have their concerns answered. Many have already made the decision to distance themselves from the church on personal grounds, but like to flatter themselves that they are doing so for compelling scientific reasons. Attempts to correct their misunderstanding of science are often met with evasiveness or hostility. Over the past year, I've received many profanity-laced tirades from critics and disaffected ex-Mormons over my writing on the DNA issue. The logic and language of these are not worthy of repetition. Over the course of my life, I've had many non-LDS friends and acquaintances who held religious or personal beliefs that I considered to be unsupportable or even bizarre, yet I've never felt threatened by allowing them the right to believe as they wish. Beyond the desire to defend my own faith from false accusations, I've never felt any desire to discredit other beliefs. <clears throat> Doctrinal criticisms of the LDS Church by evangelical hirelings can only be considered capricious when viewed in the context of studies that have repeatedly documented that massive percentages of their own pastors do not believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ, that Jesus was the Son of God, or that God communicated with ancient prophets. Even from a born-again evangelical viewpoint, Christian researcher George Barna has documented that the biblical purity of teachings acknowledged by Latter-day Saints is above average for Christians in general. 
In the scandal of the evangelical conscience, Ronald Sider has documented that the lifestyle of most evangelicals is strikingly discrepant from scriptural standards. Christ taught, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? He declared, why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? While Latter-day Saints are not perfect, and some negative exceptions exist in any large group, the remarkable record of LDS society on the whole for scriptural living and morality has been extensively documented by sociologic studies. Critics are not objective evidence seekers or fair-minded scholars, but mere cafeteria sophists playing up findings they believe they can present to their advantage while ignoring data they find problematic. To my knowledge, critics to date have not been able to produce a single publication in a peer-reviewed scientific journal on Book of Mormon DNA issues. While validation of study controls is critical to the testing of any scientific hypothesis, Mr. Murphy and other critics have accepted without validation the assumption that modern Jewish DNA represents a comprehensive and valid control of the genetics of ancient Israel. This assumption in itself demonstrates profound ignorance of Jewish ethnohistoric dynamics. It is rather shocking that while the original study authors repeatedly comment explicitly that their studies of modern Jewish populations do not necessarily show that the haplotypes in question represent early Israelite genetics, Mr. Murphy and other critics have conveniently omitted mention of these cautions. Mr. Murphy fails to disclose the lack of any meaningful mtDNA commonality among modern Jewish groups that undermines one of his foundational arguments attacking LDS views. The internal control he presents of the Lemba is not comparable